Uh, my question is for Mr. Seltzer. Uh, you've all spoken extensively about Fox News being a purveyor of uh, disinformation, uh, but CNN is right up there with them. They push the Russian collusion hoax. They push the Jesse Smollett hoax. They smeared Justice Kavanaugh as a rapist, and they also smeared Nick Sandman as a white supremacist. And yes, they dismissed the Hunter Biden laptop affair as pure Russian disinformation. Uh, with mainstream corporate journalists becoming little more than uh, apologists and cheerleaders for the regime, uh, all the mistakes of the mainstream media and CNN in particular seem to magically all go in one direction. Are we expected to believe that this is all just some sort of random coincidence or is there something else behind it? Holy shit! It's too bad, it's time for lunch. <laughs> I think you're describing a different channel than the one that I watch. Excuse me. What? Uh, but I understand that that is a popular right-wing narrative about CNN. <laughs> How does a guy who is a notorious spreader of disinformation, who recently got fired from his job at CNN, end up hosting multiple panels on stopping disinformation? At the dark and ominous World Economic Forum, no less. Wait a minute, that makes perfect sense. He literally spent four years spreading actual Russian disinformation and conspiracy theories about Russia influencing our election with Facebook ads, which turned out to be total bullshit. And we'll get right into this ridiculous panel after this quick message about a free coin offer from Noble Gold. Noble Gold Investments is pleased to let you know that gold is the best investment class of 2022. According to longtermtrends.net, gold has actually outperformed the S&P 500 down and Bitcoin for 2022. So what are you waiting for? Open a gold or silver IRA with Noble Gold Investments this month and receive a free one quarter ounce American Gold Eagle coin with every qualified IRA of $50,000. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold and their thousands of five-star reviews. So call 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. And remember, there's always risk in investment and there are no guarantees of any kind. Uh, how does this discussion of disinformation relate to everything else happening here today in Davos? Ha! <laughs> Stelter seemed to have gained some LBs on his time off. His head appears to be overinflated, and is it just me or is Stelter glistening like he's covered in baby oil? Uh, how does this discussion of disinformation relate to everything else happening here today in Davos. Well, first, uh... That's A.G. Salzberger, chairman and publisher of the New York Times, a notoriously left-wing, Democrat-friendly, partisan newspaper that always coincidentally makes mistakes that cut against their opponents. So he's in good company with Butterball Brian. Salzberger is most recently known for forcing the resignation of an editor for the high crime of allowing Tom Cotton to publish an op-ed. Thanks for having me as, as part of this conversation. As you can imagine, this is something I really care deeply about. So I, th I think if you look at, at um, this question of disinformation, I think it maps basically to every other <laughs> major challenge that we are grappling with as a society and particularly the most existential among them. So disinformation and, and the broader set of misinformation, conspiracy, propaganda, clickbait, you know, the, the, the broader um, mix of bad information that's corrupting the information ecosystem. Yes, all the things that you're known for. Go on. What it attacks is trust. And once you see trust decline, uh, what you then see um, is uh, society start to fracture. And so you see people fracture along tribal lines and, um, and, uh, and it seems like all the supposed guardians of disinformation are themselves prolific spreaders of disinformation. And here we have yet another panel of these obviously dishonest actors who we know are doing all of this as a pretext to censor their critics and opponents. If, you know, if you're spending this week thinking about the health of democracies and democratic erosion, I think it's really important to work your way back up to where this starts. These people are incapable of seeing themselves. 
They just helped influence the outcome of an election in favor of Joe Biden by giving credence to the actual disinformation that the Hunter Biden laptop story wasn't real. You spent four years spreading the myth that Trump was president because of Russian influence. It was probably a Russian agent, which you earned a Pulitzer Prize for. But all of it turned out to be bullshit. That is what's so utterly absurd about this panel of political propagandists who think they should have the power to decide what is and isn't disinformation. It does not take a high level of intelligence to see that this is an attack on the First Amendment, which they think only they should have. The term fake news and then disinformation, it was popularized six years ago at this point. Where are we today versus them? What do you mean, where are we today versus them? <laughs> wait, wait, uh, so this was a... a, a <laughs> A hot, popular topic. Yeah. There was an awakening about it. The social networks felt pressure. But now where are we? And uh, same question for Jeannie, but where, where are we today? Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, it's a great, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> and and to, to be clear, actually, terms like fake news and enemy, enemies of the people have been popularized cyclically in society mm. and in, in some of the most, you know, um, you know, repressive and dangerous moments, you know, Nazi Germany, Stalinist Russia, right? No. <laughs> don't you just love how they have free reign to compare everything they don't like to Nazis? But if you do it, then you're a horrible person and must apologize. But no, as usual, it was Democrats who started the fake news trend. With their so-called war on Fox News, as Obama communications director Anita Dunn called it, and wasn't Stelter's full-time job attacking Fox News? But but I guess it's different. Yes. So, um, so I think anytime we're hearing language like that applied to, you know, a free press, um, you know, or, or more broadly, free expression, I think I think we should be um, really worried. That's exactly the problem. So-called free press like the New York Times and CNN are clearly just tools of the Democrat Party and are used to protect them from accountability, while also constantly demonizing and otherizing their opponents. They even stoke political violence using disinformation when needed. Um, you know, where there are reliable, transparent standards, you know, for example, in an institution like mine, when we make mistakes, we acknowledge them in public and we correct them, right? Um, Again, these so-called mistakes always cut against and hurt Republicans. Then the correction is never as loud as the initial disinformation. That's exactly why we call them the drive-by media. Once the damage is done, it's done. And I think they know that. They just tell themselves that their deception is being done for good reasons. Just like Sam Harris said to justify a self-admitted left-wing conspiracy to rig the election for Joe Biden. That's a left-wing conspiracy to deny the presidency to Donald Trump. Absolutely it was, absolutely, right? But I think it was warranted. It's like if there, if there was an asteroid hurtling toward Earth and, and we got in a room together with all of our friends and had a conversation about what we could do to deflect its course, right? Is that a conspiracy? All right, folks, that's it for that one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button, share, and leave a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks a lot. I'll see you on the next one.